Welcome to the show. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney. We have James the Fat Man Stevens and Ryan Corpus Delecti Preston. And so far, the funniest thing I've heard and horrible, depending on which way you look at it, it's a, it's a business insider article talks about undercover uh, author finds Amazon warehouse workers in the United Kingdom pee in bottles over fears of being punished for taking breaks. So, so are they sending the bottles out? Well, that's what I'm wondering because I can totally see it, you know, being like a uh, like a bachelor pad. There's just bottles of urine stashed everywhere. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking it's like my brother with his spit bottles. And the only thing it didn't mention is how many men versus women that work there, because that was the one part of the the uh, the article. I'm wondering is are there women doing it or are they just like well you know screw it I'll be penalized and. Are they using the she we in a corner? It's just. It's, they do have that. I forgot about that. Like, yeah. It's it's one of the weirdest stories that I've found in the last couple of weeks. And where where was this at? This is in an Amazon warehouse in the U, in the UK. Which, out of all countries, I do not expect in, the UK. Yeah. Well, the UK is is different countries. No, really? Well, I mean, I just would, are they? I would assume. Well, he said country, as <laughs> if it was England. <laughs> well, the United Kingdom. I would just, I was just surprised that I, they seemed. To, I would have always thought they would have been a little bit harder on yeah, companies. Yeah, I'm for surprised. That. It's I'm surprised it's the UK, but I'd be slightly less surprised if you said it was Wales. <laughs> well, let's just say I was expecting it to like be Bumsville, Idaho, for, <laughs> instead of being in the UK. Um, so it's in. Staffordshire, author James Bloodworth went undercover at the Amazon warehouse in Staffordshire, UK, for a look on how low wages in Britain. He found that the warehouse full of fulfillment workers who ran around Amazon's massive warehouse gathering products for delivery had toilet bottles. So that, that that's and my first thought after reading this article really was the the the, the breakdown on the gender line. What do you mean? Somebody, somebody just did some uh, some video online about uh, like what it takes to do same day shipping. I wish I could remember who it was to give them credit for it, but uh, I, I haven't watched it yet. But I'm, I'm guessing they left this part out <laughs> of of that's how they're able to do same day shipping is they have their employees peeing in fucking bottles. Well, like, and what I meant was, what I said was. I can see guys doing this, but were, were were the women doing this? Were they were there no women on the floor like that? Like, I'm curious on how on how that breaks down. I mean, they'd have to kind of go and walk around. Whose wee bottle is this? I mean, they're going to do a do genetic. Do you really think they're going to do that, or do you think they're going to go and you know look at the well, CCTV footage? Eh, not I mean, uh, cameras. Got, there's not UK, cameras everywhere, so they have CCTV in there. Well, the the, the other. Um, the most interesting thing in the article is the bathroom's like floor four flights of steps down, which that surprised well, kinda, me. Yeah, that's a little bit surprising. Because you think you'd have it on the warehouse floor that you'd or have like a some, like porta potties in there or some shit. I mean something. Yeah. So then they have bottles, and they say there's targets, so you have to do so many targets per shift, or you get in trouble. Like bottles. <laughs> It's no, like many bottles. Targets You're not filling your quota, sir. Well, targets being so many orders filled within you know the right. end of the day. Yeah, I understand. And and so they were saying you know but we'll get penalized. We go the, if we go to the restroom and you know the, the typical. What I see, what I'm wondering, I'm wondering what the implied language or what the implied situation was that got them to all think this. You know, because I doubt yeah. it was very explicit. Like like, uh, listen, we will shit can you if you if you take a piss. Um. Or, or something even ridiculous, like you get one, you know, pee break per day kind of thing. So it says you have, and you got to raise your hand. I mean, but it says did somebody to, just walk in and say hand. like, "Oh, it, it'd be a shame. It's a nice place. It'd be a shame if somebody had to take a piss here." You know, like right. it says you have to pack two products per minute. Damn, oh, wow. that's uh, that's insane. I, you know, I'm kind of curious too. I bet it was some sort of low level manager who was basically, you know, like you said, it would. It would be a shame if something would happen to your job, you know, like some sort of like stereotypical gangster from the fifties. Well, the, the 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 two packages a minute thing, you know, I guess when you got to run down four flights of stairs, I mean, you gotta you gotta now do three a minute for X amount of minutes. You know that can that can add up pretty quickly. So, yeah. 
that's a. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, but there's no, there's no state designated breaks in these places, or I mean. Oh, I'm sure there are. There, I mean, it's the UK. It's quite a socialized. System. I mean, if the United States of all countries, like as far as first world countries, has mandated break periods, I'd be really surprised if England didn't. Yeah, I mean, that would be a very surprising thing to me as well. I... So, I got another article. Yeah, you guys... I, I have one. I just so another one. This is off of the Blaze, um, but I thought it was hilarious. So the headline, what? This thing's like falling it's like oh it's, it's heavy so woman calls cops isn't, on, isn't the blaze like some bullshit fucking news site or something it's yeah, it's, the onion. it's glenn beck's uh news network um i don't generally read it but this the, the headline made me laugh woman calls on cops on man playing with his kids at park because she was afraid of his pro gun shirt so it's it's one of these you know it's one of these pro gun shirts that says uh where is it I have a picture on the article. Basically, it says, you know, if you have a problem with my gun rights, get lost or something like that. And I guess it says on Saturday, Blue Lives Matter reported that the man's shirt was not only upsetting the woman, but reportedly others in the vicinity as well. Troy Johnson was visiting. Where was this again? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, Texas. It was visiting Wait, a Benbrook, Texas playground with his two daughters to play in late March. Let's see. Oh, God. Let's see. Where's the shirt? I figured it might get some comments or looks. Johnson told Blue Lives Matter, but I was legally exercising my first, my first and Second Amendment rights. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I just hilarious that that, that that somebody was so upset by a T-shirt. I used to wear a ton of pro-gun shirts, but well, look, people are recreationally upset by by anything they want to be upset by, you know. But it, I mean, the I, I'm always obviously gonna gonna fall on the free speech side, you know. what I mean. Yeah, but I mean, why call on a T-shirt? I mean, is he... Pl- and they I called mean, the cops. I, yeah. Uh, I mean, who was the operator on that? Why Why is... What is the purpose of your phone call, So, so she called on the police. She called the police and said there's a suspicious person who had a gun holstered to his chest wearing an offensive T-shirt to the cops. I'm just fascinated because I've never read a T-shirt huh. ever and go, that's offensive. Unless... It's overly graphic, and it's an area with a lot of children. I don't consider guns graphic, but if it was like a girl with her boobs hanging out, yeah, I, I might say, hey, dude, you need a better choice of T-shirts. Yeah. Or those big Johnson shirts. But but with a gun, I just, it's like, and it's in Texas. For but no matter, no matter, what, the, really no matter what the T-shirt, I've seen purposely offensive T-shirts, but my instinct isn't to call the cops. <laughs> Right. My whole thing would, if I was heard, like, well, maybe I should visit a different, you know, I'll go somewhere else. This, I don't like this or. Right. I just you're, you're in a public place. You have no reasonable expectation that, that, that somebody is, it has to abide by your fucking moral code. I mean, just, is she calling on people wearing the burkas? I, I mean, just, really, you know I mean? That's, yeah. I, I mean, if you're going to call on ridiculous shit, call on everything. It's just hilarious. Racist. Because I don't believe somebody called the cops on a T-shirt. Well, no, call call that time, James. You want to call? You want to call that time if there's rapists. <laughs> Especially if they're doing out in the public. You on a kid's play. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to let that. You don't want to let that one go. Yeah. It's it's it's, al- it's almost like a, some guy taking his six year old to the Deadpool movie. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> you gotta was have a, actually his uh, so kid. Or someone else's. <laughs> it's gonna have a lot of questions of why that man was just go uh, down to the park. Hey kid, do you want to go see Deadpool? I just want. I just yeah. wish I heard the conversation about Daddy. Why was that woman in his underwear and he was on top of her for forty five minutes? Which Deadpool did you watch? Yeah, well, I'm exaggerating. It was like five or ten minutes. When he had, you know, sex around what, what, the... what Deadpool were you watching? That's what I'm saying. I, I really? Mean, it's in the Deadpool sure movie. Was, five or, five or ten minutes? It was like five-minute scene, You know how it? long five or ten minutes is? <laughs> yes, because I remember thinking, <laughs> damn, isn't this scene <laughs> over with? Get, let me see the killing and, and, and fun stuff, not... I mean, Trinity's death. Not Morena Bakarin being sexy? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I wanted That dead... movie could have been about him and Morena Bakarin being sexy, and I'm all in. I wanted more Deadpool. It's like, come on. <laughs> I wanted to see, I, I, I went in there for death and dismemberment, not some chick in her underwear. 
right. Yeah, but that chicken underwear was Miranda Picard, and so all's forgiven. <laughs> so did you guys know? As that... you can tell, I'm a fan. <laughs> Didn't notice. You don't say. <clears throat> but wait, who are you a fan again? Hey, ever ever since Firefly, man, love that chick. Uh, she's hilarious. Yeah, but she's the whore in Firefly. No, she's a companion. That's what. Yes, her fucking yeah, her her and her and Mel's uh, uh, relationship was goddamn comedy. Okay, so did you and what's know- wrong with whores? You say that's like it's a bad thing. Some of my best friends are whores. If you don't mind getting an STD for a living, you're your own best friend. I don't do that for a living anymore. Oh, okay. All right. Oh well, yeah, you paid to play with corpses. They stopped. You. <laughs> They're always stiffing them. So, did you guys know today is a, or this month is Exotic Meat Month? Exotic Meat Month. Yes. Still sounds like Ryan's former employment. I just want to know what these hipsters are coming up with this shit for. But anyways, um, so in North Carolina, Bull City Burger and Brewery is making burgers with everything from alligator to iguana, python, bison, turtle, and insects. Iguana sounds disgusting. And one of their burgers that is $30... They do a pasture-raised beef burger topped with Gruyere cheese, chili sauce, and an oven-roasted tarantula. This sounds disgusting. Whole legs, everything. <clears throat> now I've seen the picture. I, I'm into trying a bunch of different shit, but I, I really don't want to have a tarantula as my burger for no. thirty bucks. I had. You, Ryan, would you try that? No, I'm not really into that sort of thing. I was gonna say I'm 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 into you know whatever kind of exotic meat you can you can think of you know that's what I was trying to think of like okay well it's not just venison because I don't really consider that an exotic meat yeah I would but, say like, I mean are we talking baby seal exotic like like what's our, uh, yeah, our line here I'm I would like, why I, don't you do baby seal things or some shit I would say a tarantula I would say for most people venison is an exotic meat just because it's not something nowadays you don't have a whole lot of hunters true um. So I would yeah, say that, not, I, I would say as far as the whole, the average person, I, I don't think we do like that. that I think I, the same amount of people that hunted 30 years ago is the same amount of people hunting today yeah, because my, you grew up in a household where hunting wasn't looked down on. And, you know, if anything, there's, uh, there's more people probably trying it from, from suburban lifestyle. See, the great thing about these days, and I'm not like, uh, I'm definitely not one of those like, oh, in the good old days, the good old days are bullshit. There's actually a bullshit episode about it. It was great. Um, but uh, nowadays you have you have access to all these different types of, of things, you know, be it hobbies or lifestyles, you know, diets and things, things that you would only otherwise hear from your friends. Like you didn't you didn't look into blacksmithing. You You either knew a guy who was a blacksmith and decided that would be fun. Or that was it. You just never thought about it. And my dad you know, was nowadays, years you ago, can watch a YouTube anymore. video. Sure, I, but I mean, but that's that's whatever. You well, know, I'm just a lot saying. Of people you know, don't I would, when they get a little older. I would say the average Joe Schmo out there has maybe had venison once. I don't really think there's that many people who are hunting who are at least sharing the meat. That would not be enough to be at least quasi exotic. No, I alligator definitely iguana, of course. Turtle, they emu, turtle. You know, well, yeah, turtle, well, definitely turtle. Emu, yeah. Well, e- emu burgers up in our area has been around for quite a while. Yeah, but we have emu farms nearby, so I and people know. have been farming emu for a while too. Yeah, that's the thing. I yeah. still think it would classify, but yeah, no, I mean it, it's definitely on the more common end. Now, uh, turtle, eh, I've never yeah, heard yeah, anything turtle. good about turtle. Yeah, but I mean, as far as like exotic, if you're going to a place, and they didn't say how much the turtle burger would was, you consider but... bear exotic? Because it's 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 common, but not uncommon. I would say I'd consider bear on the on the exotic side yeah, of the chart. I would chart. say it's more exotic than not. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm into the same thing as Ryan. Like, get me some baby seal. Like, do something actually exotic. <laughs> you know, I mean, you two love go going out clubbing. There and club it, tenderize the shit out of it, and bring it back and cook it. I mean, come on. Come on, you, you really want killer whale. No, too much mercury. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just kind of where I draw the line is is the mercury content. I mean, I eat sushi. That's got a lot of mercury in it. Yeah, so, that's why I wouldn't know. go with dolphin. Yeah, dolphin too. I mean, 
Yeah. So gonna go from uh, a happy to sad news, dude. Arlie Ermy died. I know. I know, man. It fucked my morning yeah. up, bro. My fucking boss told me, and I was like, "Not Gunny, fuck, yeah. dude. That sucked. That guy was awesome. He wasn't even was that he? old. What was he? Seventy five? Seventy something. I actually got to meet him. Yeah. He Did you was, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the old guy and I were out in the shot show. I we have a I have an interview up on the old guy text website. He was talking about like you know riding steers as a kid, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, no, he was a cool guy. He said he really loved his job because he gets to shoot other people's uh, ammo and he gets to shoot other people's guns and never has to clean them. Right. Yeah. No, he was he was super chill. Yeah, that's a, the that's the best. And I've never, he was, he was a cool guy. Never heard anything bad about the guy. And the other thing is, uh, I guess I didn't realize he was a, um, he was an honorary gunnery sergeant. I guess he was a staff sergeant when yeah. he got out of the, uh, the uh, Marines. Yeah. After um, and I guess somewhere early 2000s, they made him an honorary gunnery sergeant. Yeah. Based off of his role in full metal Jack jacket <laughs> and just kind of the stuff he was doing along with that. Cause I mean, that became his kind of his thing was the tough drill sergeant guy. So they. Cause I right. Well, he so. was a drill sergeant, yeah. but, um, he, I mean, obviously you don't have to be a gunnery sergeant to be a drill sergeant. Yeah. But they have this rank, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I, I, I figure like an honorary degree yeah. from, you know, Cornell or whatever. It's the same kind of thing for, for him. Yeah. yeah basically. I, I was really bummed because I loved the, I didn't actually watch uh, full metal jacket till it was much, much later in my life, but I really liked his history channel show mail call. Yeah, um, that he was did, actually a pretty cool show. He did a bunch of cool stuff, and I was really bummed. And then Harry Anderson from Night Court dies at 65. Yeah. One of my favorite yeah. childhood shows. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, if you guys haven't... I think we did talk about Night Court yeah. in, the, in the show. It had yeah. John Larroquette and Marky Post. I don't remember all their names. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen it. Dude, I was like... There's been a ton of like cool celebrities. Like Ones like I actually really like Die, but Arlie Ermey kind of like fucked me. I was yeah. like, no... Yeah, one of the most iconic roles in any movie is the boot camp, boot camp section of Full Metal Jacket. That's I mean, still my favorite. Know. That's my favorite scene of the entire movie. I like the beginning more than yeah, anything else. Yeah, that's what else. everybody says. It's like you watch Full Metal Jacket from start to beginning the first time, and then after that you watch until boot camp's over. <laughs> so there was a line yeah. there on, on Facebook. There's a line on the movie talking about how uh, you know Marines' uh, job is to die. And they're basically like pictures of him with that quote. And it's just like, dude, too soon. Uh, I don't know. So um, I kind of sent Ryan a, a, a meme the other day that we did kind of have a discussion kind of about of what that we wanted to know the rules of it. The meme was just got fired from my job at the funeral home for inventing casket balls. Now, uh, we were kind of joking around that we wanted to know the rules of casket ball. And, uh, Is this like basketball or field hockey? Uh, well, I'm going to get into or it. Or soccer. So, um, there actually is a thing called casket ball, and it does exist. They didn't see your phone. I know. All I'm showing them. Uh, there you go. See, there's, shit, <laughs> there's shit on my phone, you see. I'm reading. Anyway, well, it didn't um, take people long to come up with rules for basketball either, you know. Yeah. Well, this one, uh, it's kind of that they... I guess the origins of it were that two live people that really never got to settle the score, I guess. Um, it came up with it in North America. And the opponents would hurl 10 to 14 pound balls at each other in an attempt to render them unconscious. Damn. And um, so wow. the rules of casketball are the game of casketball is divided up into two 10 minute periods called doopies. And each deceased opponent must slide their casket on ice into a foam ball called a puck ball, which is then knocked into the net called the net. Two deceased opponents? Yep. The winner is the deceased <laughs> player whose casket has netted the most balls. Hilarious. Now, I'm just wondering, were they like throwing these 10 to 14 pound balls at each other, not just to make the other person unconscious, but to kill them? And they fall in the casket, and then they go. It's just kind of confusing rules. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I need some clarification yeah. there. I mean, I guess the rule guys are dead, <laughs> so they don't have clarification. That's hilarious. But yeah, I kind of found a, that was an interesting um, 
Casketball, and according to this thing, the recent famous Casketball matchups are Walt Disney versus Adolf Hitler and Bob Hope versus Frank Sinatra. Hilarious. <laughs> so, if any of you guys watched the new reboot on Netflix of the reboot, no, I haven't. So I haven't the seen new it. what? It's actually called the, the show's called Reboot. It's yeah, it's called Reboot. Oh, did you ever watch it when you were younger? No, no, I don't know. You don't even know what it is. It was one of the very first truly CGI television shows. Yeah, it was, was all it was it. an early CGI. It. So apparently, since at least my generation really loved it, apparently it's live action. It's basically a Power Rangers. So apparently these people find this from the video. I haven't had a chance to watch it. So apparently what happens is they find this room like this, this download chamber or upload chamber. They go on there, uploads them into wherever this is, and shenanigans happen. So it's like so mighty... it's kind of a ripoff of Tron as well? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and and it's the Matrix? Pretty much. And do I need to keep going or we're we just going to... Keep going. Let's see how many you can name. That's about as many as I got at the moment, but there's also, uh, what was it, didn't they do kind of similar in, what was it, War Games, and... War Games? Oh, oh, and the other one, The Gamer. They did that in The Gamer with uh, uh, Michael C. Hall. Um, hmm. Ready Player One. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but that Ready Player One, you weren't being downloaded into Actually. the server. It was, it was, it's pretty much having, you know, your... Tron... Well, Tron definitely Tron. was. Yeah. So I was I just, I was kind of bummed because I, I was looking forward to it until I heard there's any like remote live action stuff on it. Yeah. Actually, the one that I did actually watch that is a not reboot, but it's another reboot is Lost in Space. Is it any good? It actually is really good. I actually enjoy it. Um, so does it carry the the campiness of the original or, or the more semi serious tone of the, the the movie that came out in the nineties? <laughs> it's. It's not as serious as the movie, but it's not even remotely as campy as hmm. the original. Um, I heard Dr. Smith's actually, a chick. Yes, Dr. That's Smith awesome. is a chick. And um, the thing that I was actually surprised by, it's got Captain Flint from Black Sails, uh, Toby Stevens. And I actually really yeah, like I him. I like that guy. Yeah, I like him too. And he's actually doing a really great role in this. And I don't see any of the reflection, reflection of his role from Black Sails, which is... Hard for some actors to do is to make a transition, but he's doing it really Who's well. Who's he playing? He's playing the dad. Really? Yeah. I'm I'm definitely gonna have to check it out. It's on my list of stuff, but I'm too damn busy. Yeah, I actually burned through the all of it in like a day and a half. So how many episodes is it? Like nine or thirteen. It's not a very long. It's their normal I think it's thirteen episodes, but you, it's like You think not, it's gonna get renewed? I hope so. I think it will so far. I'm gonna, so. I I'm gonna have to check it. I was uh Sorry, good. No, I was a really big fan of the movie. I like <laughs> the 60s series. Um, but if Dr. Smith, and for some reason his name escapes me, wasn't as good as the, the guy who played it in the movie, he played Zerg. Um, the Dr. Smith in this one, whoever they picked, is do, has actually really doing a really good job on the role, I think. Is, um, she, is, it, is she playing? Wait, the, by, the, by the movie, do you mean the bullshit fucking... Yep, the one with uh, uh, Matt uh, LeBlanc, Ch not Chandler, Matt LeBlanc, yeah, yeah, Matt LeBlanc. The the guy who played Doctor Smith, yeah, Gary Oldman played yes. Doctor Smith. Yeah. That that's Doctor that Doctor Smith. What I really like. So if it wasn't as good as that, well, because it's fucking Gary Oldman. He was the only yeah. decent thing in that movie. But that movie yeah. was so, the the beginning of it had a more serious tone. That's why I was comparing it because the original was so campy because the era. It would be hard to take that one Actually, even remotely the serious. The thing I really got to say is the star of the entire series to me is it the kid is what they did with the robot. What they did with the robot is actually really cool. I won't spoil it for any of you guys. Really? But you guys, I, I'm really impressed in, in what they developed the robot into in this one. So, hmm. I, um, as far as I'm concerned, there is all, a, uh, all the show. actors do really well, except for one, but she's not a main character. And that's the only actress in the entire series that I think sucks. So. I, yeah, but she's not a major character. I'm curious. So do they leave Earth to you know the colonize a new planet like the movie, or are they just exploring? They were in the process of getting to another planet that's being colonized. They kind of did the space station uh, kind of so know, it's midway type thing, and that's where. 
Okay. I don't remember what the 60s reason was. Yeah, I don't remember But really the, the, the 90s movie was, you know, the planet was dying, so yeah. that's, you know, blah, well, blah, blah, shenanigans. Well, the planet is dying and overcrowded type thing, but... But that's yeah, that's an, that's a ton of sci-fi, yeah, so... so it's not really a big, you know, drawback. Big deal, yeah. yeah. What were you so. saying, Ryan? Oh, I was going to say there was another show that I was, uh, that I had just kind of I had scrolled past it a few times because I'm I'm uh, still a bit apprehensive on doing like the Amazon originals or the Hulu originals that kind of stuff. I'm slowly kind of working my way in. Uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel was fucking fantastic, and that was yeah, on Amazon. I actually did but like that one I, too. But. Yeah, it was fucking good, man. But uh, the the one that I had scrolled past a few times. I didn't really even give it a chance to kind of read what it was about. I just kind of whipped by it. Uh, it's a show called Patriot. Hmm. And I heard somebody talking about it on a, uh, on a, another show I was listening to earlier. And, um, I went on and I, I, I read the description and I was going to try to talk my girlfriend into watching it after so, we're done with this so thing. Question. But, um, hold on. It's, Can uh, I, I want to guess, is it, is it close to, is, is it in between the Steven Seagal and Mel Gibson movies? With the same name? No, that's why I kind. Of, I mean, because that's that's the sort of the, the the imagery that was evoked when I scrolled by Patriots. So I was like, eh, whatever. Um, but the uh, basically what it is is a uh, intelligence operative. Um, I, I think it was uh, in order to stop Iran from going nuclear. Yeah, in order to stop Iran from going nuclear, he he goes uh, uh, on the knock list. And works at some fucking Midwestern, uh, like, like pipe fucking firm or something like that. Like he just starts like some, some middle-class Midwestern job, you know, presumably Indiana or some <laughs> shit like that while he's, you know, secretly trying to stop fucking, you know, presumably world war three, I suppose. Why stop it? Why? Why? I've never, I actually haven't heard of that one. <laughs> I've heard of yeah, it. neither um, have I, but uh, it's gotten <laughs> great reviews so far. So talk so we're gonna about, check it out. So, so talk about stuff like that. What do you think about Netflix being banned from competing at Cannes and similar festivals because they're not releasing their films to theaters? Um, I think that's bullshit. I really do. Well, yeah, because the the well, I guess when people go to film festivals like that, the idea is to get it sold to a studio who's going to then distribute it either into theaters or DVD or et cetera. Um, I guess without that, what's the point, you know, I mean, if you're your own distribution thing and you're just going to show up and, and win all the awards, I mean, I could understand them obviously being accepted for, for Emmys and Oscars and those types of awards, SAG awards, it you does, know, Directors Guild, Writers Guild. It does seem like you're pissing but, uh, up the, a rope the a little bit, film festivals, though. But the film festivals are for, you know, like the independent filmmakers who are trying to get their, their film sold. I mean, the way I understand film festivals, I mean, if there's some other weird reason that they, they didn't want them in there, then... Oh, then no. I get it, but it's not it's not your average award show. You know what I'm saying? It's it, film festivals are like, hey, look, we we did this thing for like a couple million bucks. Hopefully, we win some awards here so we can get some distribution. Oh no, totally. I mean, it's 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 um like it's for places like our friends at Shunk Films who did a girl in a gun in the cell um, type of thing. But I I think it's weird that because I think it's you're kind of pissing up a rope because pretty much as much as I hate to say it, theaters. I think at some point in time are going to become niche products, a niche experience. No, no, they've, they've, the fucking Marvel Studios has seen to it that that will never happen. I, I think at some point in time, it's going to be a little bit of a more limited experience because pretty much Quentin Tarantino is right. I mean, right now, going to the theater is like watching TV at home. You've got $15 popcorn, $20 tickets. I can do all, I can do all yeah, that but at certain, home. Certain things are either a a communal experience, you know what I mean? Like 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 horror movies, people still like to kind of go and see in a in a crowd and and have that experience along with it. Um, so so here's here's my thought. You know, like 
James and I'll kids and, and your kids, uh, unfortunately, at some point in time, are going to get the experience of watching more movies at home. And what about that? You know, what about the, the next generation? Dude, I've been watching movies at home. I've been watching movies at home my fucking whole life. And I'll still go to the movies if it's some some big tentpole thing. You know, I went and saw King Kong in the theater because I want to see that big. I don't have a fucking 14 foot screen in my house. I, I don't know. I, it'll, I don't. I mean, I do think the theater is going to be around. I do think the paradigm shift is with Netflix and is companies like that. Uh, Disney being an old school, I can totally see them releasing to the theaters. But I think the theaters are going to be having some, you know, some major well, competition. I think, <clears throat> I think what's what the competition mostly is, is in network television. You know what I mean? It's it's ABC is going to be fine. But as far as people consuming their content from like an actual television appointment viewing, that's gone. Oh yeah. I mean, you time know, shifting uh, and DVRs you know, oh, we have to be that. at home at six o'clock because it's must see TV fucking Thursdays. That is it, people would laugh at you. as you say like, Oh, were you watching in front of your TV at eight o'clock when that thing aired? And be like, no, what are you talking about? I'm going to watch it later on tonight. Probably yeah, like at been, 11 o'clock. They've been doing that for a long time with TiVo. I mean, and all that other shit. Right. I do think theaters it's are It's mostly gonna... for TV, though. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's going to... I do think theaters are going to be having issues. Now, I don't think it's a good thing, um, just because the, the benefit about going to theaters is there less distraction. It's are, a better way to view the art form of movies and cinema versus being at home, because... I have to, you know, if I'm at home and something's happening, I got to pause it, got to get up, go back. But but are you talking um, as far as it becoming an issue? Are you talking like 10, 20 years from now? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, I mean, not not the immediate future, but I think sometime in my child's lifetime, theaters may be going away to some degree. Nah, no fucking way. I mean, just the simple fact that that plays. I mean, something that's been a thing since you know stage plays have been a thing for for hundreds and hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. What's the last think, time you went to a play? Definitely thousands of years, actually. I mean, people still go to see the theater. It's not some some dead art form, but it's niche. It's it's a niche art. No, form. It, I mean, no, it's not. Are you fucking kidding me? When's the last time you went to Everybody a play? Everybody in the world wants to see Booker or Hamilton. When's well, dude, do you think I can afford fucking Hamilton tickets? Well, no, I mean, anything. When's the last time you went to a play? But Doesn't think, have to be Broadway. But I think John's got a good point. I think I think as far as it's going to be concerned, I mean, when was the last time ticket prices were under $10? And now you're bringing up, like, uh, you think I can afford to go to see a play? Do you think ticket prices are going to go below 15 again? It's really? going to have to be a value proposition. Well, if they're, go, they're, if about, they're about 14, 15 now, but also a lot of these theaters are throwing in the lazy boy seats. Yeah, the the, really the nice. bring your food to your, seen, yeah. to your, bring the food to your seat so you don't even have to get up. You well, know I mean? Uh, the, but I think all kinds of little things that own. they're. But I think that's them realizing that their type of business is on the the end of not being as common as it was. Well, here and here's the reason why. Like when I was a kid, it's you know five eight bucks for a ticket, and for four people it was a cheap afternoon. Now if you have a family of four, you're spending a hundred dollars almost anywhere between I'd say well, fifty to eighty dollars. Five or six, five or six bucks a ticket. That was for matinees. I, I, I think what it is is the value proposition isn't there anymore. That's why I do think they changed the seating. That's why I think they've started doing dinner theater and theaters more mm -hmm. because they're losing ticket sales. Now, people are going to go to Marvel and go to going to go to that, but I, I do think eventually they're going to have to figure out a better value proposition. Now, a lot of people have thought about, okay, for that $15 per ticket, you also get an ability to watch it online. Or what else can you do? Because I do think they're going to start struggling. I think they already are struggling. I think, I people, I think people are always going to watch movies. And you might see some ebbs and flows when it comes to ticket sales or things like that. But it's it's always going to people are always going to meet up and go to the theater and they'll they'll survive enough. There might not be as many screens or as many things or the, the big giant, you know, uh, Google plexes and things like that. But it's I, it's still something that people want to do on a Friday night. You know, but I'm, let's go see a movie. But I'm thinking like 10, 20 years from now, I think that the theaters have realized that they are that their ticket sales have gone down in the past, I'd say 10, 15 years. 
and that's why a lot of studios are also releasing DVD releases a lot sooner than they used to be. I think. I well, mean, yeah, we for sure. Kids, when we were kids, a movie was in the theaters for six to eight months, and you didn't get the VHS release for like a year or two. I think. Now, yeah, well, it depends like on the movie. The, the DVD or Blu-ray release within five months, or if that, if not sooner. I've, I've yeah, literally, and, I've, and, I've and, literally yeah, seen them. Sometimes it's a lot sooner. I've literally seen them on movies that did poorly. There was that. Uh, there was what was it? It was that whale movie that came out, the Whale's Tale really? or Water Tale or something like that. It literally it was in theaters. Shape one, of Water. Uh, something like that. It was with the what? guy who played Thor, I think. Shape of Water. It was one of these movies that it did so Oh, wait, poorly. you're talking about In the Heart of the Sea. Yes. Oh. It was literally in theaters one week, and the next week it was in Walmart for sale for like 10 bucks. Um, Here's the funny funny. thing. I fucking like that movie a lot. I want to see it. I just don't have time. My list is getting it's bigger. It's fucking good, man. That was a fucking good movie. I even talked to Gallon to watch it, and she dug it. I, I right? think... Yeah, she liked it. Right. <laughs> I think I think what's going to happen is I think it's going to be they're going to be more like theaters and, and and plays is the fact it's something people do see, but I don't think it's going to be as common. Hmm. I do think people's entertainment and it may people in the future may not even, you know, watch on their well, giant screen TV as much because I know a ton of people who watch content just on their cell phones or tablets. Yeah. I think Yeah, what but it is, those people are called dumbasses. I think what it is is I the, mean, the, the, the only reason I stay home is because I got a goddamn big ass TV that's in 4K. I think but what's there's still things that I'm like, no, I want to see Avengers Infinity Wars in the fucking theater, you know? I think what's it's a paradigm shift. I just think what's going to happen is, is it's just... It's just a shift in, in the way people do things. No, I hope theaters are still around. I oh, love yeah. going I, to theaters. I, going I to think I too, think but... they're going to adapt quite well. I think they're going to see where the where the where the ball is headed, and they're going to get in front of it, and they're going to be there to catch it when when you know they're they're going to stay viable. Now, I what really interests me is are they going to stop with doing you know non-stop Avengers movies because I know a ton of people no. who are tired of non-stop superhero movies. Well, they, they don't have to go to the theater, but trust me, they're going to make their money. And they, uh, they have the plan worked out for the Marvel Universe for like the next 20 years, dude. Mm -hmm. No, I know. I'm just wondering, I'm just because there doesn't seem to be, and I haven't had a chance to watch a lot of reviews, I don't see a lot of original content still. I want more well, original yeah, I mean, movies. yeah, you got stuff like The Shape of Water and the three billboards of Ebbing, Missouri, and I mean, those are all, you know, I'm sure based off of novels or, or what have you, like they always are, but, but I mean, that's the thing is that, that hardly anything under the sun is, is new anymore. I mean, even, even back when we were kids, you just didn't know it was based off of some high, you know, best-selling novel or something like that. You know, Shawshank, I mean, you know, we called that an original movie. It was a book. It was actually a novelette. It I was mean, all kinds of things. It was a short story. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It no. was pages that had words on it that told the story. Well, yeah, no, I mean, nothing is new, but I think what it comes from is is I'm tired of superhero movies. I, I want something different. Like, you would never find, like, say, example, when I was a kid, I loved Driving Miss Daisy. You would never see that in the theaters now because it probably wouldn't make as much money versus yeah. why spend the money to invest in that when you can spend, you know, that make a Marvel movie and, and make quadruple <laughs> your money back worldwide. Well, see, that's the thing, though, is that nowadays <coughs> it seems like these studios, and obviously I'm just fucking armchair quarterback and they're, or, or, you know, commentating here. It seems like these studios are, they're making these big giant movies. They're doing Avengers. Well, one, because people want to see the shit, regardless of if a few people are like, I'm tired of it. You motherfuckers will come back around. You watch. But they're doing it so this thing makes $300 billion. And then they're able to make something like three billboards, you know what I mean, with, with Frances McDormand, who's an amazing actress, but, you know, is not going to get the kind of air time. It's not going to be in the theater for, for four weeks on end. It's going to have a pretty limited run, win all the awards, and then people will catch it on DVD later. Avengers is you know, pretty people much... still do watch real movies. Avengers are pretty much the Call of Duty of movies. I mean, they oh, re they God, release yeah. them every year, and most people are going to play it or buy it. But it's always going to be like, eh, it was entertaining. But most people are going to play it or buy it because they're good. Uh, 
I don't know. Okay, I I don't I don't like the Call of Duty games because they're so derivative. But Corsair Avenger movies. Really. Well, I don't like them because they're they're not derivative. They're just repetitive. It's just it's the same thing over and over again. And I don't understand how people can play those things for for years and years. You know, I, I get tired of running through the same maps over and over again. But I, I would say, though, you know, we're not talking about a story narrative like Fallout or or, or the Elder Scrolls. I'll fucking play those games as long as they keep making them. See, yeah, Fallout right. doesn't really have that deep of a story narrative versus it's the ambiance and well, the atmosphere. Well, it's sort of a sandbox. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's you're going there because it's a post-apocalyptic world, and everybody loves a post-apocalyptic world that they can visit and then go home and go. No, but it's it's um it it is a narrative though, but it's a narrative that that partly you're creating in your own mind. You know what I mean? It, it gives you enough of a framework where you can sort of interpret these decisions based off of your own personality. So you're the main character in the story. True. You know, and it's there's certain games like uh, like the Far Cry series. You are a character. You have a specific goal. There's a specific, you know, end to that goal, and that's what you're doing. You know, like you don't have the 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 choices like you do. Or hey, I'm going to play this like a nice guy. I'm going to play this like an asshole. I mean, I've known, I've read stories about people who literally never killed anybody in Fallout Four. I'm not quite sure how you do that. Wait, what exactly? They they took a complete pacifist approach. How? How long did it take them to beat the game? That's all I want to know because that must have taken them for probably a lot of a lot of saving and going back and redoing dialogue. <laughs> so, have you seen the new Tomb Raider movie? I have I have not, not but I do, I really want to though. Oh man, I've been dying to see it and I just it's one of those things that I can't get away on the weekends anymore. It's Is it out in the theaters right now? Yeah. As far as I know, I thought it was. No shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, have to, I haven't looked at my, my theater fucking schedule in a while. I don't know what's that anymore. Because I really want to see it. I mean, because that's one of the few movies I say in the last year that that was on my list of things just because I want to see a, a good female lead who's not the stereotype. Like, the Angelina Jolie was the typical, oh, it's an attractive woman with big boobs and action, you know, very thin character or none at all. So I'm... When with the reboot of the, the 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 Tomb Raider games, she's an actual character, so I'm really excited and jonesing for a really decent female lead. That's why I liked Wonder Woman so much because you actually had a pretty decent main character. You just having a crush on Israelis. That helps, but dude, but I was really impressed with Wonder Woman. I mean, it wasn't what I was expecting. You had a strong female. Yeah, I, I I really enjoyed I that flick too. It, but you know, it wasn't my. Favorite of the ones that's come out. But, yeah, but I mean, you, know. you had a strong female character who wasn't necessarily stereotypical. Her I mean, outfit I, I, is, but I that's the comic book. That they went more of the the um, not kid <laughs> Wonder Woman experience type thing. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I. You liked, know, they they did some of the comic book cliches, right. but they actually had her be a badass. Like she's presented a little bit in modern media. Like the stereotypical one was, you know, you bind her wrists and no, she's a helpless damsel. There was none of that. Yeah. Yeah. They're definitely, I mean, come on. I mean, this day and age, there's no way somebody's going to even pitch that in the fucking writer's room. But, so, uh, I'm kind of, but I, no wonder woman. I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's been a, a huge shift lately, you know, especially the last call it five, six, seven years of, of these incredibly strong women characters. I mean, you know, look, I, a lot of women would argue like, oh, she's only strong because she's out there killing people and doing all the man stuff. Like, okay, granted, you know what I mean? You have something like Atomic Blonde. It's like, all right, now we're watching the chick kick some ass. But, but I mean, it's still, it still is, is it, I know, right? But it still is that. That's, I mean, you know, regardless of. That's an interesting look, narrative. I mean, like a guy, a guy just, you know, doing, you know, raising his kids well. That's not an interesting fucking story unless it's really funny. So, so yes, a strong woman character, it still needs to be an interesting story. And interesting stories to us are, you know, hey, let's blow some shit up. I, I think you that's know, an that's interesting America. narrative what, what that, that, that the only way they think a, a strong female character can be, can be strong would not by do, you know, like they're saying basically killing is a masculine thing. I f that, that's an interesting narrative for a movie to, to go, for anybody to take it. But do you bleed? Jeez. You will. Um, that's that. That's no. I got it. I just refuse to answer. Oh, uh, I I just find it fascinating. That that's a really interesting way to take it. I would have never thought that somebody would have said that. I, really? 
it well the <laughs> only thing the on, the only thing that I'm not really fan of right now as far as strong female leads is they're talking about making the next Indiana Jones mm. a woman. Now here's my take and and I don't, mean the, I don't mean I don't make the make the I sexes. thought they just did with Tomb Raider. <laughs> well, but exactly. Here's the I know. no no I agree. I but agree. They, I heard they want to reboot. It. So if it's a true reboot of <laughs> Indiana Jones, I'm a hundred percent against it because. I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of a purist to the character. Now, if it becomes his daughter or, or a student or something, like completely remove the fourth one, I'm You cool know what, with though? That. I was, I was uh, watching this thing the other day about uh, comic books. It, it, it was basically kind of like a, uh, a, a, a Superman, you know, sort of where it came from. And, and they've actually basically the point that I'm trying to get to, they, they've actually had to reboot these, these things many times. Cause when you have so much, so much knowledge about a particular character and so much canon, I mean, over damn near a hundred years, I mean, we're talking 80 years, some odd for, yeah, for Batman super, and Superman, and Superman yeah. maybe, a, maybe a little. Longer yeah. Superman. So I think the media, right. Longer on Superman, but you have this, you have this long period of time with these superheroes. So, you can't just say, hey, what was true in the 40s is still true in 2018. You have to kind of like, okay, look, that's this chunk of Superman, you know, up until like the, the, the 70s or the 80s. And then they rebooted it. And then now that's that chunk of Superman. I and now they're going to reboot it. And there's the new 52. And, you know, they did the same thing with Batman where they kind of not threw out the old canon, but they retired it. As far as the new storytelling, I think the difference so I understand, is okay. You can't do Harrison Ford. Here's what I'd be really pissed for: if they replaced Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones and said, "Hey, this is your new Indy." Yeah. I'm I'm actually fine with them just rebooting the character. Hey, here's a woman. This is a new thing. Is Her it, name is Indiana Jones because whatever it was the dog's name. I don't see. I don't like that. I want it to be a male character because honestly, if Jennifer Lawrence was the new Indiana Jones, I'd be irritated. Versus. That, see when Why? they re, when they reboot Superman, Superman's still a guy, just because that's that's just the purest I am to the story. Now, I I want to reason. But that's why. my point: is you you can still be a purist to the old Indiana Jones. I mean, are you a purist to fucking Crystal Skull? Because I don't even consider I, that uh, as as no, part of the not, fucking story. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. talking about the trilogy. The fourth one should have never been so made. So I'm not really a, you're not really a purist either. You know what I mean? If we, if you want to be a purist to one, two, and three, like I am, and like James is, I'm sure like America is, then then fine, jump on the bandwagon with us. So but if, if, if they, Jennifer if, Lawrence see, was is, so here's so here's a question: If Jennifer Lawrence, or like as she's the, still the ho a hot Hollywood actress, was going to be declared the new Indiana Jones, would you see it? Sure, hundred percent reboot, and it's done in yeah, hundred percent reboot. 19, I'm, I'm, I'm and it, watch it, and it was done in 2018. No, no, 1930s. That's done. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, because it's a reboot. It would Why would you do it in the, in the 30s? Because to me, that's well. To me, it's the it's the quintessential time for for sort of the archaeology excavation. Everything was still kind of mysterious. But it's you a know, now we know too much. There's a lot of technology, but it doesn't matter. It's it's a reboot, so they're gonna get they're gonna go away from now. Probably what they're gonna do is they're probably gonna do not it necessarily. The they're probably gonna go. They, they, re they, they rebooted uh, Murder on the Orient Express. They took place in in the whatever fucking time period that was. Yeah, I haven't seen. It I'm yet. I'm more cool with them doing that it example. More like it the, wasn't that good of a movie. Okay. Really, I seen that it. sucks. I I really wanted more of like the reboot of Indy being a, a guy. Kind of treat it like they they did um, James but Bond. But you've seen that movie though. Yes, I just like I said, I'm I'm an obnoxiously purist when it comes to the source material. That but they see they haven't made they never made Superman a woman. They made Supergirl. Yeah, they, did, they, made but, they 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 but never no, made hold on a Thor second, a woman. They, 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 get, when they, they when they redid the the new Fifty Two, they I think Thor's a woman now. Well, no, like, but, they literally but, gender swapped a so few so characters. No, what happened is Thor didn't become a woman. He lost his powers, became who he truly who who his original name, and the Thor power was actually transferred to a different person, which allegedly was okay. His well, there you go. Natalie oh, okay. Um, I don't remember her name, but I think uh, that was the character, the actress who played her. Yeah, Natalie Portman is. Who See, that's Thor. why I'm like, if it was somehow related to India or or I don't know something, I, I want a passing of a torch. But you know, like I said, I, I know. Well, I'm, what would I'm, be what would be the difference though? <laughs> it would matter. You know more the to way me. the way we were all introduced to Indiana Jones 
was, you know, I mean, it was actually one of the greatest fucking character reveals of all time. I mean, when he's when he's running through the thing, and then he comes uh, comes out of the thing, and then he fucking he looks up, and his hat kind of reveals his face. Oh, if we had that same moment, and it was a chick, and she had just done some badass, hey, let's go find a fucking thing, be you'd either. be you'd be in just as well. Yeah, yeah like, I actually kind of agree with James and you. It's Tomb Raider. I mean, realistically, they can do it. I mean, I'm just a purist, just because of how much I like the original movies. I mean, I, I, I totally admit it. I know I'm not, I know I'm not the majority on this. I really do. Most people don't I care just, as um, much as I do. Nah, I don't know. I, I think, um, I think it is Tomb Raider. I think, I think if they really want to redo Indiana Jones, they have to do like what Ryan said, where they freaking nail it off the bat or they're going to have right, because, a thousand. Because Indiana Jones nailed it. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the reason that we love it, because they fucking nailed that movie. I don't, I don't think... You give me another good adventure movie and I'm in all that. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're going to be able to do that, though, for a couple of reasons. For one, Indiana Jones was kind of a throwback to those style movies in the 30s and 40s anyways, but I, I, I think what it is is we have such high expectations of it. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm a big fan and a movie buff. I think it would be really hard to pull off because look at all the crap people are still saying about Star Wars. And those are the hardcore fans. Look at all the crap that they're still saying. See, about here's Star. the thing is, I actually don't think it'd be that difficult. I think with the original, uh, not the original, but, you know, like with Crystal Skull, like James was just saying, they jumped the shark there because they didn't know where to go with the character. You got old Indiana Jones, so okay, we have to have some new kid to make this sort of viable. And the movie ended up kind of sucking some assholes. No, I think what it was... One, okay, we're well, back to young characters, and it's not that fucking hard to make a good adventure movie. It's just, it's really not. I think, honestly, what it was is it was supposed to be the beginning of a new trilogy. I actually think it was supposed to be a patching of the torch. What they didn't realize is, A, the movie was cheesy as hell, and B, how many people dislike Shea LaBeouf. Um, yeah, would, really. Well, would, he's definitely not any River Phoenix. I would actually be for a reboot of the young Indiana Jones. Make that a live oh, action. Oh, man, River you know, Phoenix I would really be dope. I really think that that's what they were trying to do with the one throwback like kind of history scene where they had River Phoenix. And, you know, I think that his death kind of threw that under the bus. Well, they did have the, was it the Chronicles of the Young Indiana Jones? That was shit. I, I liked it at yeah, the time. Yeah, it was shit. That was shit. I liked it at the time. It was I haven't awful. seen it since. Yeah. I, like I said, at the it time was, it, it came awful. out, I liked it, but yeah. I haven't seen it's it like since. It's like watching the Goonies again if you go watch it. You'll be upset. Probably. Because it sucked the first yeah, time. Yeah, you it's will be. Again. So, well, so. I don't know. We'll see. Of course, you know, I was excited about the new Mommy movie when I, until I realized what they were doing and I disliked yeah. it. <laughs> and I, tr I actually watched it and I tried and it just... Eh. I, the, the, biggest, the biggest problem with me is it's, it's my... The image I have of it. To me, Indiana Jones will always be Harrison Ford yeah. because it's not a character that's been played by different people. Um, it, the... You know, so that that's the issue. It's it's a problem with but, me. But you know, but that's the same thing. I mean, Batman wasn't played by anybody else until Michael Keaton did it. You know what I mean? I'm sure there was people at the time like, "How dare you replace oh, yeah. Adam West?" I don't yeah. know anybody who at the time who actually complained about that because of how campy it was. I think more yeah. people are like, "Why but are they it making?" Can it? Be, I think more people for that totally movie were like, "Can be why one of those characters that becomes like a." But it become it can become one of those characters that's like a Batman or 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 a James Bond or you know, somebody. There's always going to be a new character. We can years, well, you know, and things like that. We'll so. see. I mean, hey, I, I wish them luck. I'll see it just to see how big of a muster cluck it is. I mean, I'm hoping it's good. I'll go into it with no expectations, hopefully, instead of like panning it. <laughs> Um, I want it to do well just because I love those style of adventures movies and that's not really what they do anymore. Yeah. I, I um, it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's not a genre that gets, that gets enough, uh, enough going on. I mean, even, even like Die Hard, which I even consider on the edge of an adventure film, uh, they don't do anymore. It, it's, well, I'm talking about like a good, like a good treasure hunt movie, you know? Oh no. Yeah, no, I completely agree. They don't do anything like that. Well, they try with national treasure. The first one was good. Yeah. The second one was ridiculous. On top of an already ridiculous uh, plot, I mean, the first one, they somehow topped it to make it even worse. Which I'm not quite sure how you do that. I mean, I mean, that's just that's the Disney version. I mean, just like like, hey, kids, look, adventure. 
Well, technically, Disney owns Indiana Jones. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but it, it, Indiana Jones wasn't really, I mean, you know, definitely liked it as a kid, and it wasn't really a, eh, it could be considered a kid's movie, like a, I uh, a PG a fucking movie. fun for the whole family kind of thing, yeah. I saw Last Crusades in the theater, so. The Outlaw Josie Wales is PG. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a good point. I'm not making it up. No, no, I, but P- <laughs> I, I yeah, think PG. Yeah, PG had a different meaning back then, you know? <laughs> yeah. Here's a rape scene with Tit. <laughs> Hell, but, uh. Well, what was it? The Transformers movies, PG. For one word. Piece so, of garbage. Yeah, I like Orson Welles. Um, I don't, I, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to see what they do next, though, because I want them to do something, and if I have to force myself to like an Indiana Jones to get a good adventure film like that, I'll do it. That's why I want to see Tomb Raider. Because it's... Uh, it's yeah, a- me too. Because I'm invested into the new games because I love the new character. I love the the, yeah, the, the way too. they made her look. She looks like a real person. She has some weakness to her, which I totally dig a, a character having to over, well, I overstep love, her weakness. I love that uh, that love. I love the sort of reluctant call to adventure kind of thing. Like, ah, oh, fuck, I really don't want to do this, but whatever, I got to get done yeah and she's not on instagib she has some vulnerabilities so you have some you know something to grab a hold of and say come on you can do it you can do it versus you know like the 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 original tomb raider movies she was you know invincible and you knew it there was no weaknesses i mean they tried to feign it a little bit but it wasn't played off that well yeah yeah it was those those first ones were bloody embarrassing movies so ladies and gentlemen for jonathan for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, the Mad Trio thanks you for watching. Goodbye.